My lab focuses on cancer research, but in a different approach. We are using, actually, stem cells. This type of stem cells, we call them mesenchymal stem cells, resident in the bone marrow. And actually, they are known to be a very quiet cell that can be transplanted from one patient to another. So actually, one patient can donate the cells, and this may be a, a more universal system for other patients. We want these stem cells to produce the type of drug that actually will inhibit the tumors. So the first step was, of course, to genetically engineer the cells to produce the type of drugs. When I'm engineering a cell to produce a drug for cancer therapy, usually we talk about native drug, like proteins and uh, other components which uh, the cell know how to produce. The cell do not know how to produce um, chemo agent because chemo agent usually are synthetic. The idea here is to use the cells because they know how to produce the drug for as long as they live. Now, in order to bring the cell to the site of the tumor and to protect the cells from the environment, the rest of the environment, meaning antibodies from the body that won't like the cells or any other component, we place the cells in a tiny, tiny capsule. In the capsule, they will be protected from the environment, and actually we can say that it is a mini factory that actually makes the drug for us in our body, and the drug will reach the tumor, and of course, hopefully, will inhibit the tumor. So as long as they live in the capsule, they will produce the drug. This capsule is composed of a material that our body do not reject. It's made from sugar in a special way of design. The drug from the stem cells, it's uh, released by the cell to their surrounding, and then they diffuse sh slowly, like you put them in the water. They go out, reach the bloodstream, if they are far from the tumor, and the bloodstream bring the, the drug to the tumor side. If they are near the tumor side, it's still, uh, they diffuse through the tissue until they reach the tumor. Now, the capsule is usually injected near the tumor, not in the tumor, and this is in purpose. Why? Because we want to demonstrate that in cases of tumor that we cannot reach to the tumor itself, the drug can diffuse to the bloodstream and find its way to the tumor. In breast cancer, prostate, skin, or uh, liver, we can inject a capsule near the site of the tumor. The uniqueness of this design was that actually no one tried to encapsulate or to put in this capsule stem cells because no one knew how these cells will behave, will they change, will they live, and we found that actually they can live nicely and comfortably in this capsule and actually for a very long time. In the lab we tried them for several months and they were still viable, still working, still there. So the cells know how to make the drugs. As long as they live, they will produce the drug. We know now by different researchers that the, stem, the cancer cells actually draw the stem cells and the stem cells comes to their site. And the one that comes to the tumor sites are the mesenchymal stem cells, the one from the bone marrow. So we know that for fact. So we are using this fact just to kill the, the cancer. It's like a bullet, a magic bullet. The cancer do not know that actually the stem cells that will be near uh, the cells now the cancer cells will actually produce a drug that will kill him. And uh, we use this balance between these cells in order uh, to achieve the final goal, which is the inhibition of the tumor. When you use such a system, you inject only once the system, and the drug is diffusing as long as the system is there. It can diffuse for one week, two weeks, three weeks, months, or a year. So the patient don't need to get repeated injection not every day, not every week, which is huge, first of all, for the patient. Second, reduces the amount of the drug tremendously. And if we decide that the job is done and we need to finish and take out this capsule, that's what is nice with this technology, we can uh, do a, a small surgery and actually take them out. They don't degrade, they don't move, they don't float in the bloodstream. So the place that we inject them, that's the place that will stay. In our study, we have um, saw that if we injected two animals, not human beings, this system was not tested yet in human beings, if we inject the capsule with the cells that produce the drug in a tumor that is produced in 
animals, the tumor is inhibited almost immediately. When we say almost immediately, is in two weeks, we almost have an 80 to 90 percent inhibition of the tumor. If we leave the system there for as long as we want, we can even detect almost abolishment of the tumors. The second stage of uh, the research is to do uh, the same study in large animal, if it's possible, which we call preclinical uh, trial. After that, uh, we need the support of, of course, a company or funds or a hospital together to do what we call clinical trial. And in clinical trial, you have three phases of clinical trial that you have to go if everything goes well. Between the second phase of clinical trial and the third, we can uh, actually approach the FDA, which need to approve this treatment upon the result coming from the patient. And after approval, then it can be started and uh, fabricated in companies and then reach the market. But it takes a very long time to, to uh, approve this process.